y'all. Good morning. We look like the Bobsy Twins. I we guess have on black and black and pink and white. And I have on pink because who just died recently? Priscilla Presley. Presley. Yeah. Priscilla Presley, in honor of her precious daddy, I have on pink. You have a story about Graceland. Miss Kathy is joining me today, and we're going to talk good news about mortgages. But we're also going to talk about some of the things we love in common. We love comedy. Yes, we do. We love comedy and we love Elvis. Yes. You got to go to Graceland. I've never been there. I did. It was... Lucky you. Yeah, it was actually a family trip. One of my nephews was playing in a football game uh, representing uh, his university in Memphis. So Really? We went to the game, but we also took a little side trip to, to Graceland Yay. and learned more about Elvis than I ever knew. Did you actually stand at the gravesite? Yes. <gasps> wow, how cool is that? The whole property is just really incredible. Yeah. And it's like walking into a time capsule because nothing really has changed since that 60? day. 60. Is it decode 60s or 70s? Maybe? 70s. 70s. Yeah. 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 What was yeah. really funny was in the kitchen when you walked in, one of the cabinets, they had taken the cabinet door off and they had just glassed it over so you could actually see what they had in the, the cabinet. Oh my gosh. And Elvis had the same dishes as my grandma. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. That is so cool. That is so, so cool. That was fun. Well, we're going to talk first of all about the weekend. We're going to recap this weekend. I can tell you it was cold and it was windy, but it was also very musical in downtown LJ because I was lucky enough to be sitting for three hours on the front row filming the Marlon Brackett show with Mr. LJ, Adrian Stover, and um, Spencer Kirkpatrick, wonderful guitarist. Oh my gosh, he's amazing. But we had a really good time. It was a good turnout. I'm thinking as I get out of my car in the afternoon, it's too cold for this. We'll have a lousy turnout. Nobody will come. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. They surprised you. They surprised us. People love music. It was packed. It was wonderful. And <clears throat> it was really cool because everybody just, you know, they got into it. They stood up. They applauded. They did a standing ovation. You know, it was, y'all weren't a bunch of old dudes like I thought. <laughs> you know, I thought a bunch of old geezers were going to show up. <laughs> These are people that are alive and fun. It was fun. Do you want to define old geezers? Old geezers, <laughs> yeah. Old geezers. Well, let's see. An old geezer might be a brunette who now bleaches their hair blonde, or it might be a silver-haired old lady who now colors their hair brown. <laughs> so it could be any of those things. <laughs> could, would we qualify? I'm going to take the fifth on that one. Thanks. <laughs> would we qualify? Thanks, Sherry. <clears throat> we are in a market... We're going to talk a lot about this today. We're going to talk about the real estate market, according to statistics, down 38% in sales from last year. Mm -hmm. the, that means that your job as a mortgage specialist, your job, you're not quite as busy as before. The attorneys are not quite as busy as before. But we see on the horizon by June, we see things being better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, most of the industry experts, and I'll use that term loosely, mm -hmm. um, are predicting that interest rates are going to start to come back down again, end of first quarter, going into second quarter. Mm -hmm. So I do believe they are correct and that they are going to come back down in the fives. Mm -hmm. I do not believe they're going to go back down into the threes. No, no. Um, <clears throat> that would be the fact that we were in the threes for as long as we were mm -hmm. is really unprecedented. Yeah. And 2.75 at points. Yeah. Yeah. I mean there were there were times and, and you were like, as a realtor, you're like, my gosh, <laughs> that's amazing. You know. Right. So everybody bought houses. <clears throat> a lot of people weren't ready to buy a house, mm -hmm. but they said we have to do this before the interest goes up. What did that do to the price of homes? Yep. Jacked it up. Big and time. 40% 40, 40 mm -hmm. um, across the board in market appreciation between 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. And that really, it wasn't sustainable. No, no. It really wasn't. Mm -mm. So something had to change. We were all anticipating rates going up, 
but what did come as a big surprise was how fast they went up. Mm -hmm. That has mm -hmm. been unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, someone that qualified for a home in January of 2022 at, you know, 3%, you know, at the end of the year is looking at far less buying power mm -hmm. when the rates are in the sixes or at one point we even hit the sevens. At a time that people still think and, and because we're seeing the appraisals adjust themselves, and because I lived through this during that last era of craziness in the economy, an appraisal on a $526,000 house jumped to, seven, to 250, 250. We saw appraisals cut in half. Do we see that now mm -hmm. yet? Good, no. good. The, and the reason for that is there is still nationwide a shortage of good. homes on the market. Good. good. And as long as there is a shortage of inventory, it mm -hmm. is still going to be a seller's market. Okay. In my opinion, the market appreciation is slowing down. Mm -hmm. In 2022, we did not see the 20 or 24 percent that we saw the year before. And with interest rates higher this year than they were last year, it is going to be slower. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to be a reversal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. As a homeowner, What's the highest you ever paid personally? Now you do this for a living. Mm -hmm. What's the highest you ever paid as a as a buyer buying your home? I bought my first condo in 1981. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my rate was at 11 and a half percent. The year before, I was selling real estate. Mm -hmm. Sold my dad a home using his VA eligibility for a mm -hmm. VA loan. Mm -hmm. The best rate we could get for him at the time was 18%, and that was with the seller paying closing costs. 18% for 18%. your daddy of VA loan. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. It yeah. is. Yeah. And um, years later, m he um, allowed my cousin and his wife to assume the loan. Mm -hmm. um, they've refinanced it. They're still living in the home, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh, kind of nice to go home and wow. still have that See in the that. family. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Now tell folks, number one, she doesn't know, didn't know what grits were for a long time because you grew up in the Midwest, which I think Correct. is hysterical. Because I know Southerners who don't like grits, but mm -hmm. I think that's a crime. I think that's, you know, <laughs> that ought to be a sentence of at least 10 years. I love grits, I love grits. But when you mentioned cream of wheat, when we were talking earlier, I love cream of wheat too. Uh -huh. I love cream of wheat. Now, what's the difference? Why do Midwesterners drink, eat cream of wheat and why do we eat grits? What's the deal? I, I honestly don't know other than, um, I guess maybe we grow more wheat in the Midwest than maybe we do that's corn. Fine. I mean, yeah, yeah. But for me personally, I think cream of wheat has a little bit more flavor and texture mm -hmm. than grits. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's just well, my have, preference. Have you ever had shrimp and grits? Yes. Yes. And do you like that? I do, yes, okay, okay, I do. Okay, shrimp and grits is kind of like, I, I'd never tried it and I'd heard of it and heard of it and then I started making it about seven or eight years ago and everybody just loved it. And I thought, why didn't I make that all these years? Because yeah. I do love grits. On that first so. trip to Louisiana, um, for dinner one night, I had shrimp and grits, mm -hmm. and it was like, okay. And yeah. that was like, real shrimp and grits. If that you was had real it in Louisiana, yeah. that's like the it real was. stuff. It that's was. like the real stuff. Well, I hope this weekend was fun for all of y'all. We were lucky enough to truly have some good weather. We didn't have the snow they predicted. There was a little bit of snow over on uh, the other side of uh, Cahutta, and, and you know, there was a little bit of stuff, but nothing bad. So let's celebrate the sunshine. Let's celebrate the beginning of a new year. You know, traditionally, the first quarter of the year stinks. Economy-wise, it always does. People mm -hmm. are getting over Christmas. They're getting over spending more than they should have. They're all stressed because, you know, I bought Mama that so-and-so and she didn't like it. Everybody's kind of, uh, you know, the first quarter. Mm -hmm. So let's get through the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the second quarter. If somebody wants to qualify for a home today, how do you lead them into it? I took it. The reason you're here today is last week I took, oh, I hope I don't get in trouble the most boring class I've ever taken. And it wasn't here in LJ. The one I took in LJ was a good one. I took one online that was so boring because mm -hmm. people were asking all the wrong questions. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me as a mortgage specialist, what do we do to get somebody ready to buy a home? 
Well, the first thing really needs to be a conversation with me mm -hmm. because most clients are not going to divulge their non-public mm -hmm. information to a real estate agent, whereas right. they're, right. they're going to share that information yeah. with me. Right. Um, I've been doing this going on 18 years, and I have found that there are some clients that will tell you one story, and I get another story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like to have that conversation with the client so that we can address any potential hurdles mm -hmm. in their process up front mm -hmm. before they go out and fall in love with their, their home. That's the thing that scares me. I want my people pre-qualified because I don't want them to get their eyes on something they can't possibly have mm -hmm. and then say, well, you, you said you could find me my dream home. That was my dream home, but you weren't pre-qualified. Right. So to me, my most important conversation with my client is let's get you pre-qualified first so we don't have disappointments. And what I've also found over the years is there is a great misconception over what somebody really has to have to be pre-qualified for a home. Mm -hmm. You do not need a 20% down payment. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, you do need to have you know, decent credit mm -hmm. and uh, the Tell higher... Me your opinion of a score that, that to get into a decent interest rate. Decent interest rate or qualifying mm -hmm. for a mortgage? Decent interest rate, decent okay. interest rate. Because Two different things, yeah, right. exactly. Um, you know, there are programs that will allow for a credit score down to a 580. Um, there's some non-QM um, portfolio lenders that will do credit scores even lower than that. It, I know, but you have to have more money and in, in more skin in the game, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which makes that a little bit of an affordability problem for maybe right. that first time home buyer. Right. Uh, with the, the question about the best score for the best rate, that really depends on the loan program. Mm -hmm. A uh, conventional loan will make loan level price adjustments based on the credit score, the type of property, and the loan to value. Uh, FHA, which is only for primary residents, mm -hmm. doesn't have quite as many. There's, there are a few, mm -hmm. um, but you can generally get a little bit better rate. Mm -hmm. If your credit score is, let's say, under 700, FHA is really something to consider because everybody pays the same mortgage insurance premium, whereas mm -hmm. on a conventional loan, it's based on that credit score and that down payment. Mm -hmm. So that can have a huge impact on what your total payment is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about if somebody is self-employed? That's, oh, I've been self-employed all my life. I've been self-employed since I worked for a jerk. And I said, thank you for being a jerk because I will never work for anybody else again. I will be self-employed. So all my life I've been self-employed and had to do, what do they call it? Um, the, the one loan I got was six and three quarters percent interest, and it was because it was stated income. I believe that's what it was. Okay. Yes. yes. The stated income, stated assets loan programs all went away. Really? After the crash. Okay. Um, some people abused that program. Mm -hmm. They were put in that program where they shouldn't have been put in that program. Mm -hmm. The the self-employed borrower can present some additional challenges. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly. Um, for a conventional loan or an FHA loan, we have to use the tax returns to show income. Right. So if you're writing off everything in the sun. See, I ran into that last year. Right. I had to not write off stuff right. that I legally could write off. Right. So ran you either, into that. Yes. So you either yes. you, you pay your Uncle Sam the taxes yes. Yes. and you have more income to qualify <laughs> for a home purchase mm -hmm. or you keep writing everything off and we have to look at an alternate non-QM mm -hmm. loan pro portfolio product for you mm -hmm. using maybe bank statements. Mm -hmm. um, the downside of that is you are going to pay a higher interest rate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just really depends on what right. your, your now, strategy do you, is. Do you do USDA? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, USDA is the, is, is the good one that, that helps a lot of folks, mm -hmm. helps a lot of folks in certain areas. Now, in ball ground, only certain areas, areas. are there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me what area people could qualify. I think a lot of our viewers would qualify for USDA. Yeah. USDA, it is a great loan program. Um, it does offer 100% financing. And if the appraisal comes in above purchase price, you can use that additional amount to 
finance some of your closing costs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize right, that. Right. That's one thing that has not changed over the years. Uh, the, the thing with USDA where it can be a challenge is the property has to be in a qualifying area mm -hmm. and the USDA loan program also has implemented income limits mm -hmm. for the household. Right. So even if one person is only going to be on the mortgage, if there's someone else living in the home that's bringing in income, mm -hmm. that has to be included. Mm -hmm. So that's turned out to be a little bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. For some and clients. is it in today's economy when loaf bread is four dollars a loaf and eggs are five dollars a dozen? Have they adjusted the USDA cost of living? What you can yes. make? Okay. Actually, all of the um, the loans across the board had an increase in January for mm -hmm. new loan limits. And if people wanted to see, do I qualify for USDA? They pick up the phone and call you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and that's the key. A lot of people, I, I met a young couple um, a few weeks ago and, and they're like, we really want to buy, but we don't think we're in a position to. And I said, well, number one, the first thing I want to know is what's your credit score? And you don't have to give me any personal information. Just tell me, are you above 680? Mm -hmm. And once they tell me yes or no, then I know where we go. Mm -hmm. But if they don't know that they qualify. Maybe she's working part time. He has a, a job. If they're making less than eighty thousand dollars, would they qualify for USDA? Probably yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. For in a home in a and eligible area. And there are a lot of home uh, possible owners in our communities that are making less than eighty thousand dollars a year mm -hmm. the, for the two of them. So that still gets you into a home. Right. Would you rather make your landlord rich, or would you rather buy your own home? You want to buy your own home, trust well, me. <laughs> you know, as the, the market has shifted in the last six to nine months, a lot of, especially first time home buyers, started to panic when rate, mm -hmm. rates started oh, going yeah. up because, yeah, you are. know, instead of looking at maybe a $1,500 a month payment, now they're looking at $1,800 mm -hmm. a month. Mm -hmm. we, we know that the rates are going to come back down again. Historically, when we're in a recession, mortgage interest rates generally drop. Mm -hmm. To what level they're gonna drop, sorry, crystal ball's a little mm -hmm. fuzzy, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. if you watch the trends, you can see the pattern. The thing with um, most home buyers, because they're afraid to take that first step, they're not getting in and being able to take advantage of the market appreciation mm -hmm. that they're mm -hmm. gonna see. Mm -hmm. So I've been telling my clients, marry the house, date the rate, and divorce the landlord. <laughs> I love it. I you love, know, it. I put love it. Put that money in your par pocket. Even mm -hmm. if you're paying that higher interest rate, mortgage interest rate is still a tax deduction. Mm -hmm. They haven't taken that away from us mm -mm, yet, have they? Mm -mm, okay, mm -mm. so you will have some tax benefits. The other thing is rents have gone up a ridiculous amount. They're appreciating anywhere between it's 8 crazy. and 12 percent a year. I meant to show you as we were driving in today from Ball Ground what rents for $2,500 a month in Ball Ground. Mm -hmm. $2,500 a month. Now you can get almost any kind of house you want for less than $2,500 a month in a reasonable three bedroom, two bath neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do it. So why would you want to pay $2,500 a month know. rent? And on top of that rent, you are not building, growing anything for yourself. Right. There's nothing there for you except paying to the landlord money. Exactly. So I am all about get yourself in a home, even if it's not the perfect home, the exact home, the my dream home. Get yourself in a home and build that equity. Exactly. You know, the idea of having a property and unless you are looking at it as your forever home, mm -hmm. like I really wanted to get rid of stairs as I was getting older. I mm -hmm. wanted a ranch home and it is my forever home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not leaving. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but my first property that I bought was a one bedroom condo. Mm -hmm. I was single. I ne only needed affordable. one bedroom. Affordable. It, it was very affordable. Yeah. Um, I held on to it. Um, I got transferred. So I wound up renting it for, for several years and you know, I sold it and I, I made a profit. So, you know, you need to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And sometimes 
you know, taking a smaller property or maybe instead of that single family home, maybe looking at a town home mm -hmm. or a condo, mm -hmm. at least gets your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to ask you, have you got a calculator that we could come up with some figures? Oh, about? absolutely. Okay. What I'm kind of a you, loan officer would I be without a calculator handy? Okay. A $260,000 mortgage and it does qualify for USDA. Mm -hmm. What would it take for some a young couple, I know a young couple who would love to own this home, what would it take to get them in it if they have a decent credit score, if they have a 640 credit score? 640, I actually need my financial calculator okay. for that instead of just the one on my phone. Okay, well do but, what you can. Yeah. Um, if they had a 680, if they had a, you know, a, a, a mid-range is what I'm thinking. So probably, Taxes, insurance. The taxes on the house would be about $900 a year. I do know that. Okay. Okay. And the insurance, I think we got a quote for about 1100 Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yep. I was yep. going to say about 200 for taxes and insurance mm -hmm. escrow. Mm -hmm. um, they would probably be looking at somewhere around... $2,400 a month, maybe? Okay. 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 So and that would be all in. Yeah. And that includes taxes and insurance. And, there you go. and yeah. the um, and the mortgage insurance. Right. Okay. And on the, is it PMI? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, after two years, if you develop a good payment program, can you get rid of the PMI? Depends on the loan program. Okay. Okay. So FHA, USD. Because that's one that's always scary because that is giving away money. So you want to get rid of it if you can. Yes, but it, it, it's more than that. It really needs to be what is your strategy for the property. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is one piece where a lot of home buyers really haven't thought that through. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to stay in this home for at least five years. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay in this home only a year or two. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a year or two and you don't have the 20% down payment to right. get rid of the mortgage insurance, then paying MI for two years not a big deal. Not a big deal. Yeah. If it's... Especially if the market continued to grow. Exactly. It takes care of it. Yeah. Um, uh, with a conventional loan, you have to um, pay mortgage insurance for two years. Mm -hmm. And then with the servicer's blessing, you have to order an appraisal and a petition for the MI to be reduced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you can refinance the property. Mm -hmm. If you have that 20% equity position, then the MI automatically falls off. Right. FHA loans, USDA loans, the MI runs with the life of the loan. They changed that seven or eight years ago, I think mm -hmm, now. Mm -hmm. I lose track of time sometimes. Um, but the only way to get rid of that mortgage insurance premium is to refinance. And it's purely because you went into the house with no skin in the game, basically. Or very, or very yeah, little. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I've seen some closings where it was like $845 for a couple to close. Is that mm -hmm. realistic? Yeah, on yeah. a USDA loan? Yeah. 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 I've actually yeah. had... Uh, a couple of deals over the years where um, the only thing the client paid for was the appraisal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Everything exactly. else was covered. Yeah. So, so that's your choice. Do you want to keep paying rent and make somebody else wealthy, or, or do you want to finally one day, even if it's a condo, if it's a townhome, if it's you know, whatever, it's yours, and mm -hmm. and you see you see something that be belongs to you and you get the value it, it just it's a no-brainer to me it's a no-brainer to me too i you know i've sold real estate um i've been doing mortgages now for 18 years i think real estate is a very safe investment mm -hmm. for the most part um but we, i would always encourage my clients to have that exit strategy in place. Did your broker teach you that one thing we always learn, location, location, location? Oh goodness, yes. actually my mother did because oh, she was a broker you. and yes. she she, yes. she trained me. Yes, yes, um, yeah. Yeah, there are some areas and, and I, I, you know, you just know that you know this neighborhood is growing and it has great schools and so don't go to the worst school district and then expect to get top dollar because people really do look at things mm -hmm. like but I want my kids to go to so-and-so school, mm -hmm. and that's important. So the location is still, I think, one of the most important things you can do. I agree. Um, and when 
I was selling. That was always the one thing that I told my clients is, you know, look at the schools mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And you, you the, may not have children, but the next person will. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how far is the school? Do they have to take the, do they have to be bused? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What's the record? You know, what's the attendance? Exactly. Are they overcrowded? All the rest of yep. that. So. Yep. And is there a desirable, if I decide I don't like living here because it's too far a commute for my job, but I want to sell it, are there going to be multiple people bidding to buy my house? Mm -hmm. <coughs> that's the situation you want to be in. Mm -hmm. So that's why Creekland Creekview is the, is the greatest district in Cherokee County. It's just fantastic. And people always say, oh, no, I checked, and it's over the line. It's not in that district. And you're like, oh, no. So, <laughs> gosh. Okay, now we're going to go back to this weekend because okay. I hope the guys have some music ready that we're going to share. And this is what I got to do. Um, this weekend, I was sitting front row. I was iPadding with two different iPads. Tim had a couple of cameras going, and we got the Marlin Brackett event. It was a great success, and thank you to everybody who came out, and thank you for everybody who supports the George Link Jr. Theater. That theater was built with dollars donated in memory of someone, and I said, you know, it is amazing to see the, the community using this building all the time. It is fantastic. It is walking distance to downtown, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful facility, and I want you... I'm going to challenge you to come and do a comedy gig there. Oh, okay. And we're going to have refreshments and, and getting to know the community and getting to know your mortgage lenders, getting to know your realtors, and we're going to just have a, a comedy routine because, y'all, she takes life's lessons and she does a comedy routine, and it is about what what is life really like. Most of the time it's pretty funny. So yes, it is. we're going to go to a music break and our commercial, and then we'll be back. Got a little <laughs>
Friends on the road, they let me hear a week of traveling. It took 30 years. I can't see, I can hardly stare. No, it all could end in a drop of a tear. strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. We're back. Okay, Miss Kathy, because we're in the mountains and many, many people come here to buy their second home. They do. Can you do mortgages for second home buyers? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's talk about it. 
I love second home buyers. Um, anyone can qualify for a second home. Mm -hmm. um, it's generally a conventional loan program. And the minimum. Which would mean 20% down? No, actually, no. I can do a second home purchase with a 10% down payment. Wow, that's awesome. That's a standard Fannie Mae product, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. everybody has the same ability unless the, their company has an overlay. But mm -hmm. um, the only difference between a second home and a primary is, you know, obviously credit score is going to mm -hmm. play a part. Mm -hmm. The mortgage insurance, if you're not going to put down at least 20%, mm -hmm. um, is going to be slightly higher for a second home. Mm -hmm. And then the interest rate is mm -hmm. also a little bit higher than a primary residence. Are people taking advantage of the fact that Airbnb is doing so well? Mm. Is that a big deal? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of my s investor clients, um, as well as those that are looking at a second home, you know, we have some other non-traditional loan programs mm -hmm. that can help somebody make that purchase as long as they have enough money for their down payment. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, one of the loans that I really like for investors is um, called a DSCR loan, where we just take the income, projected income from the subject property as the income to repay the loan. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. People don't know about that. No, they that don't. That is incredible. It is. Yeah. Um, you are looking at probably a 25% down payment, mm -hmm. but if you're self-employed and you want to buy an investment property, it takes those tax returns right out of the equation. Mm -hmm. There you go. There mm -hmm. you go. Wow, that is cool. Now, with today's market, because we happen to be in that sweet spot from mm -hmm. Ball Ground, Georgia to Turtletown, Tennessee, we cover a lot of resort areas where from Kusawati to Bent Tree to Big Canoe, different areas where people mm -hmm want to come and want to spend time. So we kind of have an advantage over the rest of the world. Right. Because we're a destination of choice. Right. And, and I challenge you to come up 515 every day like I do and count the tags from everywhere <laughs> else. New Jersey, <laughs> Kansas, Washington State, uh, Oregon. I saw one from Oregon the other day and I thought to myself, how did y'all find yourselves here? I've Michigan. actually seen, a, I was about to say, I've seen more Michigan lately than, yeah, than anything. Yeah, well, you know why Michigan's down here, don't you? We were only zero degrees. They were minus 30. <laughs> so. I, I, I grew up outside of Chicago. Believe me, I understand that minus 30 below with the wind chill You know factor. what the Windy City means, don't you? Well, actually, uh, the Windy City, Chicago got the nickname the Windy City, not because of the weather, but because of the politics. Oh, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Little trivia. Oh, how cool is that? How cool is that? Now, how long have you been in the South? Oh my gosh. Um, well, I spent four years going to school in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. I lived in Dallas, Texas for six years. Because your, your accent is more like Dallas, Texas than it is Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I lived in Florida for seven years, mm -hmm. South Carolina for two, and come May, it will be 21 years ago that I moved to Georgia. Uh, Cherokee County, Georgia, yeah. What about that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <coughs> and you ended up here because you tried all the rest and now you want the best. <laughs> that, well, <laughs> that and um, at the time, it was a corporate relocation mm -hmm. at my request and I had family in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, my granddad was here, had been here for a number of years, and he and I hadn't been uh, living in close proximity for a number of years. So I decided that cool. while he was still here, I was gonna take advantage of that. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that I did. Yeah, yeah, that's neat. Now, we haven't even hit on the fact that you became a stand-up comedian because you had a bit of a life-altering event? Oh, well, yeah. It was called Approaching 62 and Thinking About Retirement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, a friend had suggested that I look into being a voiceover artist because I have very little of an accent. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a great idea. And I started taking classes and coaching. And then one of my coaches suggested that I take either an acting class or a comedy class or an improv to work on those acting skills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And 
as it turns out, I did remember that I took an acting class in high school, and that didn't go very well for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think it was the only C I got in high school. Yeah, but yeah. Um, improv is a little too loosey-goosey for me. I need a little more structure. You know, us finance mm -hmm. people like things mm -hmm. in very, yeah. very structured order. Yeah. Uh, so I took a comedy class, and the first night I was in class, I was thinking, oh my God, what have I done? And by the second week, I couldn't wait for Tuesday nights. And mm -hmm. when I did my grad set, I got up in front of 225 people, and they laughed. And <laughs> I had a good time, and they had a good time. Yeah, and yeah. I've just continued to do it. I've been doing it now for uh, just about three years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and enjoying every single minute of it. It's yeah. all about me, my life experiences, and my view on life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And your life experience that almost took you out of here. Yes. Can you talk about that on stage and not get emotional? Um, I've gotten to the point where I can share some of it. Mm -hmm. um, because some of it was pretty comical. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I was very fortunate. I've been very healthy my whole life and never been in an ambulance or never been admitted to the hospital. And I picked the middle of a pandemic to do both. Yes, yes, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It was and you almost left here. Yes, I did. It was very close, very, very, very close. close. So now because you were almost out of here, do you have a totally different attitude about life? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I take more time to enjoy the things that I like to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I still take care of my clients, um, but I don't work 24 seven like mm -hmm. I used to mm -hmm. in the mortgage business. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things, I, w I was talking to somebody about that this weekend because I said, my kids always said, you never take time for you. You have never taken time for you. Your life will be over and you have never taken time for you. And I've heard that over and over and over. And so I was in the back of an ambulance seven, seven years ago, eight years ago. And I, they almost lost me. And I, my heart was going crazy and I was gone for minutes. And when I came back, it was like I was so thankful because I was making a deal with God. And I don't know if you did that on a gurney, but I did. And I said, okay, God, if you will bring me back, I will make these commitments. And in my head, I'm going through all this because I was leaving here. And it was a weird feeling. It was a weird feeling. For me, it was I woke up one morning, grabbed a bottle of water from the garage, said, I don't feel real good. I'm just going to lay down for a minute and then I'll go take a shower. That was the last thing I remembered. I went into a coma. I was in a coma for three days. Wow. And when my friends found me, my body temperature had dropped to 86 degrees. Wow. My gosh. So, yeah. And thank goodness somebody found you. Yeah. yeah. And what are the odds? I mean, that's what's oh, so weird. Well, I will give credit to social media for saving mm -hmm. my life that day. You hadn't been on social media? I hadn't been on social media. I was supposed to have had a, uh, a call with my manager, which I missed because I was unconscious. Mm -hmm. And my best friend <clears throat> also hadn't been able to reach me all day. So, um, so we're talking, you were out a while. Um, I lay down on the sofa about 6.30. Like I said, that was the last thing I remembered. They didn't find me until about 4.30 in the afternoon. Wow. Um, it was a <laughs> uh, friends on Facebook saying, hey, has anybody talked to Kathy? Um, my best friend reaching out. Um, she sent an email, which got transferred to my manager and then when she saw the email, realized that she hadn't been able to reach me. She reached into my pipeline because she remembered I'd done a loan for my neighbor mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the previous year. So mm -hmm. she got his number. He had just gotten done with surgery, couldn't do anything, but he said, here, call Phyllis and Bill. She's really good friends with them. And they mm -hmm. came over and saw the car in the, in the garage. and. Um, I wasn't coming to the door, so that's when they called Cherokee County Sheriff and wow. they came. Did and they have to break the door down? No, actually my best friend arrived just as they were getting ready to kick in the window. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I didn't have to replace wow. the window. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they found me and um, it was 
Yeah. It was pretty incredible, yeah. the, the number of people. To be in a coma for three days, do you remember things before, after? Did you lose some memory at that time? Um, I remember laying down on the sofa, um, and that was really the last thing that I mm -hmm. remembered mm -hmm. until I started coming out on Sunday night. And the first thing I said when they, they started to, to get me a little bit more lucid, I was like, why is the dry erase board from the hospital in my bedroom? Oh my <laughs> like, gosh. Honey, you're back in ICU. I'm like, no, you let me go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. It was, it wow. was pretty incredible. And you're a diabetic, mm -hmm. so did it have anything to do with your sugar? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I had a house listed here in Kusawati and back-to-back -back closings, and, and I, I get cold chills telling this story, but my client, who is severe, severe diabetic, um, happened to know that I would always call her and give her a warning that I was going to have showings, and, and I called and said, gosh, I hate to do this to you, but we've got them every 15 minutes today. Are you okay with that? A showing 15 minutes apart saved her life mm -hmm. because by the time they got to her, her sugar was, I think, 35 or 39, Ooh, something. So yeah, something really, really dangerous. So a showing of her home saved her life. Mm -hmm. And with, with diabetic, you, you don't know where you're going next. You know, mm -hmm. you don't know where you're going next. And, and sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. But now, what's different in your life that, is it regulated better now? Um, I had, what landed me in the ICU was a medication that I was taking where my doctor had just increased the dosage. Mm -hmm. And that's what landed me in the hospital. Wow. Um, so we've changed medications and now I'm able to control it much better mm -hmm. with medication and mm -hmm. with my diet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and exercise. Yeah, and exercise. We love that exercise <laughs> word. We do. Okay, we're ready to take y'all now because Kathy hasn't, have you ever been to the Apple Festival? Here in LJ? I, I did go one year um, when my mom was still with me. Um, they had retired up to Blairsville. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we, we went to the Apple Festival. Well, right time. now, everybody's going to get to go to a short trip to the Apple Festival as you get to see Mr. LJ do a little bitty bit of music. Here we go. Folks, we thank you for coming to L.A.J. today. My name is Dwight Sanford. Some call me Mr. L.A.J. <laughs> Here's a little song I wrote. I hope you learn it note for note. bank says it's foreclosing and the pickup needs repair. The LP tank's on zero and my will is almost there. The hope I had left with you when you walked out the door. I would say things can't get worse but I've been wrong before. The postman brought a letter. He said he needs my signature. He don't know you had to go and the way you left me here. I told him I don't love you. Oh, but the Lord knows I still do And he knows just what I feel inside And the things I'm going through My brother said there's a bottle That'll make this go away You could drink until it's over or until my dying day I could do all this and make believe I don't care anymore And I could hope it don't get worse again But I've been wrong before
The boss man called from work today. He left a message on my phone. I called in to talk to him to see what's going on. They're laying off across the plant employees by the score. I would say things can't get worse, but I've been wrong before. My father said there's a bottle that'll make this go away. I could drink until it's over or until my dying day. I could do all this and tell myself I don't care anymore. And I could hope it don't get worse again, but I've been wrong before. And our country's going straight to hell on a highway paved with hope. And if we keep playing around with this, we'll hang by our own rope. Okay, young lady, you've got about four minutes to tell people how to reach you. Oh my gosh, well. You got a phone number? I do. It's 770-634-4021. That is my cell phone number. Mm -hmm. um, I don't disguise it. Um, I'm on social media, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook. You can find me at Kathy Sheehan Mortgage Lender. Mm -hmm. um, if you're interested in comedy, there's Make Me Laugh Kathy Sheehan. Mm -hmm. I have a page for that. Um, and right now I'm with Acopia Home Loans. And uh, check the website and find my name there as well. Mm -hmm. And get ready to buy a home because spring is coming. The first quarter, yeah, just sit around and whine and moan and bellyache like we do. But the but, second quarter, get ready. But, but anyone that jumps on the market now mm -hmm. is going to have a little bit of an advantage mm -hmm. because right now, just like you said, everybody's kind of taking it mm -hmm. slow and mm -hmm. waiting to see, but generally, you know, we hit March, April, that's when all the buyers come into the marketplace. So you've got less competition, right? especially for a lower price property, Exactly. Um, which that's still where you're going to find mm -hmm. multiple offers mm -hmm. even in this market. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there you go. And that's what's so important if you don't have to compete because I've been working with a couple for a couple of years and we have made multiple offers on multiple homes over market, over listing price. We didn't get them. We mm -hmm. didn't get them. So now it is the data winner. Now is the time to get out there and get serious and walk around in your boots and put on your heavy coat. And, and find a house. Yeah. yeah and I have a do whole pipeline now. of people like that, quite honestly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough. It has been. It is tough. It is tough. Now give your phone number one more time 770 634 4021. There you go. And y'all know that once we end this program today, it goes right up on YouTube. And please, y'all, get on there and subscribe. YouTube is totally free, doesn't cost you a dime. You get to just hit subscribe button and then it will let you know when we upload new programs and Tim does that all the time. And if you were at the event on Saturday night, I have posted a few of the songs that they did Saturday night. If you go to Sherry Martin, Heart of the Home, I did it on the little mini thing. Tim does it on the big one that has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of our programs. So, But check it out and subscribe to both of those because that way you're in touch with us all the time. We're actually going to do a cooking show pretty soon with a gentleman I met on Saturday night. Terry Ellis is an amazing musician. Amazing! Everybody in LJ knows who he is. And uh, we're going to do something with him. He loves to cook and he and I both agree. Have you ever eaten at Mary Max in Atlanta? I have not. Well, Terry and I had this conversation about pot liquor and pot liquor has nothing to do with moonshine. It's got to do with collard greens. Um, and it is so good and so good for you. So he and I are going to do pot liquor when he comes to visit. You know, when we look at these mountains, it's people like you from the Midwest, people like from the 
LA. I mean, we've got people coming in here from New York. Mm -hmm. We have people coming from everywhere, and the one common denominator we have, they love this area. They well, love this area. For a Midwest girl like me, Georgia has the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. A, a very mild winter most <laughs> Thank of the time. Yes, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still a change of seasons. Mm -hmm. And that was really the one thing that I missed living in Florida and, yep, and, yep. and really in Texas too, because I was in the Dallas area. So it wasn't as green as, you know, East Texas or the Hill Country. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um, I, I love living here in Georgia. It's yeah. been. Uh, it's really been a, a great incredible. place to call home. It's incredible. I and miss my family, but you know. Yeah. Now, is any family still in this area since you said your I granddad did. passed away? He did um, <coughs> about seven, almost seven years ago. My sister had been here. She moved to California, um, but I still have some cousins in the area, and mm -hmm. one of them lives just four four and a half miles away and has a sixteen month old baby. So that makes it a lot That's of fun. Cool. Yeah, it's yeah, a lot yeah. of fun. And you're a pet lover and a pet owner? I am. <coughs> have I have a, uh, a rescue from the Cherokee Humane Society. Mm -hmm. uh, rescued her, it's going on nine years ago. Uh, her name is Scarlett. She's Black Lab, Chow, Pointer, and American Bulldog. So <laughs> she's all that in a bag of chips <laughs> yeah. and spoiled rotten. And yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. love yeah. the pets, love it. And, She's in my comedy bit too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Cherokee County, their their shelter is often overcrowded. So if you're thinking about wanting a pet, if you're thinking about maybe you've lost a pet that you had a long, long time and you're ready to do it again, check out the Cherokee County Humane Society. Check out the Gilmer County. There are so many pets who are still looking for homes, and it's so important. Do not buy, adopt, adopt. So, yeah, yeah, very important. I, I and. My family, we've always had kind of the the mutts, mm -hmm. and um, they make the best buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, yeah. I think they're those little purebred things are just little spoiled rotten brats. <laughs> well, I, I had one of those when I, I lived in Texas. Too. I had an American Eskimo when I was in Texas, and yeah, he 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 was a little a bit, bit of a, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Scarlet spoiled, but he he took it to a whole new level. Yeah, yes, yeah, um, yeah. But, well, thank you for so. being here today, and, well, I, and I hope it. that we answer some questions because. As a realtor, we often get those questions, what do we have to do to get in a home? What can I do? I don't want to show them until they're qualified because I don't want to break a heart if your budget can't handle what I'm going to show you. Right. So The best yeah. thing is to have that conversation with a, a loan professional. Make sure that you have your uh, documentation squared away. You know exactly what your payment is going to look like, exactly what your closing costs are going to be, mm -hmm. so that you don't have any surprises and any hiccups once right. you do find that dream That's home. Right. All right, it's time for us to dream on out of here. We're going to head to Mike's L.J. Restaurant because I love it. I'll see you again soon, y'all, only on ETC.